recording. How much time is on that? We got one hour and 59 minutes. We're not going to talk that long. So I think we'll be good. Yeah. yeah. So this is the point when the, underestimate this us. is the point when the, the <laughs> door opens up and people just come in and put you in straight jackets for like in Denny's. <gasps> I oh. knew it. <laughs> Damn it. No, I, I thought we said like, like the good old I days. I say that wouldn't be the first time, but oh no, <laughs> <laughs> just like the good old days. Oh, it's yes. never been for like in Denny's though. So I mean, that's that's a new offense we can add on to our record. Yeah, it's kind of like <laughs> the only. Thing, it's kind of like the only thing open, Brian. Yeah, I, yeah, I understand. I'm just fucking with you. We'll talk more about it, but hey, let's get into it. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Start the Beat with Sykes. My name is Sykes and this is my podcast. Before we get started, I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank everyone who checked out last week's episode. If you're one of the people who listened to that conversation, I hope you enjoyed it. And thanks so much for coming back. But for those of you out there who are new to the show, welcome. Please feel free to make yourselves at home. And as always, there's beer and soda in the fridge and coffee in the tumblers. Make some noise. Shout outs. Yeah. What's up? Hell yeah. So, you know, what's going on? Hope everyone's well. I want to thank everyone for being here. Shout outs today to my guests. For those of you that don't know, I'm sitting here next to Jerry and Julia Mulligan, Twist of Fate Productions, Winter's Descent, amongst other great things. We're going to get into all that. But before we do, I'm going to shout out some dates I got coming up for some things because, you know, I like to do that sort of stuff. I like to do things. Today is July 11th. It is Thursday. Tomorrow night, you can catch Gray Walker at the Smiling Moose with Active Shooter and uh, another band that I can't remember right now. I apologize. I didn't write it down. I'm sure you're cool, but I just fucking forget. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sure if, if you're watching this, feel free to like punch me at the show. And then July 18th, you can catch Sykes and the New Violence playing at Scratch. Once again, that's up in Troy Hill. It's a restaurant bar. It's going to be a free show. We're going to be just there playing some music. Come get some drinks. Come get some food, some whatever. I don't know. That's July 18th. And uh, those are the two events I'm throwing out for right now. Today, I'm sitting here, as I mentioned, with Jerry and Julia Mulligan. Make some noise for the internet. What's, What's up? up? Oh, you got the clap. Cue the studio yes. applause. I like that. Very I like nice. that. I feel like I'm surrounded by a lot of happy people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of people here that are really happy that you're here. I know that I've been wanting to get you both on the show ever since we met. Uh, you know, we met sometime last year. Um, I think you came to the Grey Walker album release show, and that was the first time we had talked in person. Yep. We were hella impressed. Thank you. Thank you for coming out, and thank you for, you know, doing everything you do. We'll get into all of that. We targeted you. Yeah, we totally did. We were like, we're going to come out <laughs> Do you know what's funny? Can no, I tell a quick side note? Absolutely. Yeah. So before I had never seen Grey Walker before your album release and we went to rock on the range like the month or two before then. And I saw a Grey Walker sticker on a car out, oh, yeah. out in Columbus mm. and I took a picture of it. And I don't think I ever posted it because like I didn't know you personally yet. And then after we started talking, I like got a new phone and lost it. But so that's OK. We totally did target you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's killer. No, I, I appreciate. We'd actually been talking about coming up to you at the release, like long before we even got there. I, I appreciate the the passion that both of you have for local music and taking the initiative to like, you know, use your human skills to like use your mouth parts and eye things to like look at people and talk at them and establish connections. It's That's a, actually it's, a seriously, it's a like rare thing. Important thing. I, it's an, I so, love when people actually talk to me. That was like the thing that was really fucking cool. Whenever you reached out at the gray Walker show, like, Hey, we want to do a show with you. Like, you know, we exchanged some emails, we met up and like that first day that we had hung out, just talking about putting a show together. Mm -hmm. It was really cool. Cause I don't remember the last time I sat down with like complete strangers and just like, Oh, let's work out a show. Let's yeah. figure this let's out. Let's actually like this, meet in person. This feels, <laughs> it felt really, really cool. And like ever since then I was like, yeah, I think we'll probably be friends yeah. and I got to get them on the show eventually. But you know, I didn't want to get you on the show until I had, you know, a reason to not like you Oh, as well as like you. <laughs> so you could mess with us on the show. Yeah, so too. back to Denny's. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you can't well, have a guest uh, on until it, you have no. material. And I, I don't know. I don't know if it, if the episode has come out yet so that you would have heard it at this point in time. But there is some episode where I, I, I do forgive the Denny's. And I talk about how I do go to Denny's. I kind of, I roast. Do, I, I don't remember. I, I would remember that. I, I, I revealed it. <laughs> I don't remember when it was, but it does happen. So it, it has come out. Uh, but yeah, that's just one of those things where it's like, that's how 
comfortable I actually feel with the two of you at right. this point where it's just like, you know, like I can pick on you for things oh, yeah. and like I know that you don't have any trouble throwing it back with me like, or at other people that you hang out with. Shout outs to Rain of Z. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, what's funny is I I picked up something today and I well, well, when you open your present, we'll talk about that. I got but, uh, yeah, uh, she I don't know. Shout out to Rain and Z because I will say like as much as we totally mess with them every chance we get and you know him and Zosha are like arch enemies. Uh, I actually got to book their first show ever. And so, you know, there is a lot of love underneath of all the harsh spiky exterior. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. So for, you know, <laughs> yeah. And Zosha, if you're listening, I just want to say that I'm still planning on throwing you over a bridge in a rolled up carpet. I've just been busy. <laughs> so we'll be looking forward to that. So for anybody out there, you know, that isn't familiar exactly with, you know, what you two do together, which would be Twist of Fate Productions, you know, it is a, you you book shows Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, you know, primarily focused, but not exclusively like rock and metal bands. Right. And uh, you've been doing this for a couple of years now under that name. No, Uh, no, no. At least a year. Yeah, we got a full okay. year. Twist we have a full. It's been there for. Yeah, a year. so we do have a full year as Twist of Fate Productions. We actually just celebrated a year in March. Congrats! Officially, Ooh. congrats. Uh, as a registered business. Ooh. I know it's legit. We have paperwork, um, but we have the been. The IRS is aware of us. Yeah, that's true. That's when <laughs> it's, it's totally serious. true. When the yeah. IRS is aware. When of you, when you it. like sign names and have like lawyers yeah. and accountants, then it yep. becomes real. So that's that's actually <laughs> like a a really interesting thing, just because. I would say a vast majority of people that do the shit that we do wouldn't even bother to mm-hmm. do that. So why, why, why did, what made you feel like it was necessary to get the government involved? <laughs> We'd been doing it for like two and a half years. Well, actually that's the plan for taking out the competition. Since well, we asked, Brian. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I mean, that's, that's the, that's the real, the real deal answer. <laughs> Because if you want to take things to, I think, the next level, like you have to be accountable on some level. You know what I mean? And like you can justify, you know, expending like so much or doing so much with like a hobby or a Facebook page or whatever for so long. And then eventually it's like if you want to operate as like and play with like the big dogs and take out the competition. (laughs) We're not really trying to take out the competition. I was just being a smart ass. I'm just kidding. But no, seriously, like we we are taking out the competition. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, no, I, I mean, I think that ultimately that answer has a lot to do with why, you know, I felt kind of comfortable collaborating and becoming, you know, friend. I probably even if if you had like shitty business practices, we'd probably still be friends. Yeah. But <laughs> I'm, I'm friends with enough people That's that have good. shitty, little, shitty business practices. We've got a little bit of wiggle room. But okay. uh, I mean, so we can fuck up. A little. But, but oh, sorry. Sh- oh, yeah. We are allowed to swear, right? Yeah, you can swear. Yeah. He's okay. been dropping okay. F-bombs like That's left right. and right. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's it's cool. It's so it's it's fine. We got a little but, bit of wiggle room. We, we can pull some shit, and we won't lose Brian as a friend. Yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah. Like okay, go to cool. Denny's when we're being yeah. in, when we're being indicted. Or eat pistachios without in, the shells on them. Oh no, that that wasn't my problem. That was repairing. You got to settle that up with oh, Brooks. Okay, yeah. that has I was nothing to do with me. Like you know, when we're being indicted, we'll still have Brian in our corner. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, we'll put money on our books when we're in yeah. federal prison. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, I'll take care of you. But uh, right. yeah, you know that's that what attracted me to working with you, and just like in general, like being friends with other creative types that you know just take what they're doing a little bit seriously and want that responsibility because yeah. they. It's like it's one thing to be held accountable by others, but also to be held accountable by yourself and mm-hmm. set a standard for yourself right. in the work that you're doing moving forward. Absolutely. I mean, well, okay. yeah, no, you go ahead. I was going to say the non smart ass answer to that is it really just depends on what you're doing, whether you need to form a legal entity because, you know, some bands, it would really behoove them to go ahead and do that. Some bands, you know, because I'm kind of taking it over into uh, what I'm a little bit more familiar with, which is being in a music group. Yes. Um, there's plenty of bands out there that have their own LLC, their own legal entity. There's a, probably a lot more bands that don't. And, you know, I've heard people be like, oh, your band doesn't have an LLC. You're not serious. You're not doing anything. That's not necessarily true. It's what are you trying to accomplish? And does this suit my needs? You know, if you're talking to somebody in the industry and, you know, you're trying to take things up a level, it kind of behooves you to be able to refer them to your legal entity that you are an actual business. And it's the same thing for a promotion company. Um, What we want to do is try and we're kind of in the process of we got some things happening. We're not we're not quite to the point where it's solid. So I'm not going to go shoot my mouth off. But 
what we want to do is start bringing in bigger bands and be able to work with locals in order to, you know, put them on national shows and have um, a bigger audience and like facilitate <clears throat> real opportunities for some of the local bands here, which yeah. and I think it I, needs that I think is the, I'm not going to call it the problem with the scene here, but you know, I mean, you don't have to listen to too many podcasts to hear people start kind of talking a little bit of smack on the Pittsburgh scene, you know, and I used to talk a lot of shit on Pittsburgh, the music scene here. I was like, the scene here sucks. It's dead. And in the last like five years, I've seen a real revival. I've talked to a lot of people in the scene where they've said, you know what, for the last 15 years, we've had nothing going on. And recently we've had a lot of activity. We got people starting media companies. Um, there's just a lot more happening. There's a lot more people working together. Um, and the one thing I feel that would benefit local artists is right now, let's say, I mean, let's just kind of take it outside of context, you know, just look at, there's a kid growing up. He's like 10 years old. He's an amazing musician, you know, and he wants to be in popular music. He's not in, you know, what you'd consider to be like classical music. He's not going to join the symphony orchestra. <laughs> you know, he wants to go out and be a part of the music industry. So if you were going to give him advice at 10 years old, the first thing you tell him is, well, you've got to get out of Pittsburgh. It's not going to happen for you here. I mean, there are some opportunities here, but in general, Pittsburgh is not what we would call a hotbed for bands that are making the national scene. Um, and one of the things that we really want to do is facilitate just trying to make a, you know, because there's plenty of places in the United States where there's a branch coming off the national scene, that, you know, the the industry, so to speak. It's like a more, there's a more professional environment for them to grow. In. Right. right. And you can make even, you know, it's not Los Angeles or New York, but there's places where you can make real connections and find people who are willing to mentor you and just get exposed to the business and get more serious about what you're doing. It's really hard to find that here. And even now that things have been getting better, it's been a challenge to find people who are really serious and not just serious about what they're doing. Cause I've met a lot of passionate people here, but just people, you know, music business is like any other business, you know, regardless of how passionate I am or, or how much talent, you know, a person may have, you just don't walk into a business and automatically know how it operates and, and how to function. You have to have someone teach it to you. Right. Yeah. Things are, really good here right now, but I think it's still a really unfortunate situation for anyone that's underage because yeah. there aren't a lot of mm -hmm. venues or places for underage kids to play music that, right. you know, where I feel like they could grow. Right. Yeah. Um, and you know, there's like, barriers whenever you have underage, you know, shows too, because even like the shows that we do, the Crucible Project, like we have the we do have the option to have those as all ages, but we have a curfew when that happens. Yeah, it's just um, you have to consider different things. You know, like there's we still do a lot of underage shows. Yeah, we try. I mean, and I've had a couple bands even recently email us, and you know, you can tell that they're younger and they're still kind of learning how to present themselves through email. But like some of them are more professional than some of the bands I like, fucking believe it <laughs> older than it'll like email us. And I'm just like, I'll get these like three sentence emails from like bands that I've met or seen. And I'm just like, can you like, just oh, yeah. learn to type things a little Yo, bit. Even internet, <laughs> the, bro. The, Do you speak English? <laughs> the, <laughs> even internet, bro. The nuance, like I'm, I pick up so much on nuance now when I'm communicating with people. Right. Like a, like a, I have like anytime, like a promoter hits me up, like, Hey, do you want to do a show? It will just be like, you guys want to play a show? you know, August 12th. Mm -hmm. And that's the message. Yeah. I'm like, like nothing okay, else. Okay. Uh, where, <laughs> with who, like, we'll get back to you. Like what? What does that even mean? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> like, how am I supposed to but, respond? Like, you know, to you this? send me an email like, Hey, you know, uh, and it's not even like a, like, Oh, Hey, you know, this is, this is Bob with Bob's rock shows. You know, it's just a message from somebody. I don't know. Just right. like you guys free for a show August 12th. Like what the fuck? Like, Who hi, are you? Hi, my name's Brian. Who are you? Yeah, like, like, you know, like, like, you know like, Hey, my name is Brian with start to be. It was like, you know, I'm throwing a show at black forge coffee house on August 12th. Other bands that I'm no bands are confirmed yet, but I'm talking to Winner's Descent and Reign of Z. And I think that your band would fit really well with that lineup. If you'd right. be interested in playing, let me know. If not, can you shoot me some suggestions for friends that you might have that might be interested in playing? Right. Thanks. Yes. Look forward to working with you. Bye. Like that sounds so easy, but it's not. <laughs> it's it's not, not that hard. It's a question of attitude. Yeah, that's true. And there is like a sense of like 
And that's, I think, where it come, you know, come full well, circle people, to like. I think maybe they're just timid. They don't know yeah, how to be too. like that. Totally. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. yeah they, they're yeah. just, they don't know what to say. Well, so the, they say as little as possible. I think that's why it's important to give people a chance. It's like, right. I don't get that message. I'm like, oh, fuck this. I yeah, mean, I know. Kind of feed into it. You just got to ask, okay, well, you know. Elaborate. Hey, thanks for reaching out. Yeah. You know, the date may be available for us. Can you give us some more details? Right. And then. You just got to feel it out from there. Right. right. And then you get the email equivalent of a blank stare and you're like, oh, totally. <laughs> yeah. Here. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're done here. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much with, you know, I do want to transition just briefly because it, it, I do want this conversation to be about the two of you. And I guess I could still talk about winner's descent with this being about the two of you because you, <laughs> you're really involved with, I think, them um, from kind of like a, a band mom, band I mom. would say. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I want to put that position on your lap. No, oh, no, I I have a position. I I'm a, <laughs> I'm I'm their I'm their merch person, too. She's head and of uh, business development. I, so you, get, <laughs> <laughs> you get them dressed for school. I do. I do. I make sure they're on time. Make sure they're fed, um, pack their lunches. Make sure they know where they're going. <laughs> She's a project manager and head of business development. That, Ooh. There you go. That's, that's, that's just it. made that shit up Ooh, on the spot. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for real. There you go. So Winter's Descent, for those that don't know, I mean, you're, it's hard rock. Yeah. I would say. And you've been playing, I think there's been, you know, iterations of the band that have existed for quite some time, right? Several. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, but we don't, well, we won't dig into the past. We'll just get into, you know, what you're doing now. And this band definitely uh, came way before the two of you were booking shows. Oh, right? yeah. So I would imagine your experiences playing in a band, dealing with other promoters was at least in some part an influence or a stepping stone to like, oh, we, we could do this ourselves. Sure. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what were some of those struggles that you dealt with as a band that you felt like you could do better? And how have some of those struggles like changed over the past five years? Cause you mentioned noticing a lot of change from a band perspective or from the perspective, from the band perspective. Okay. From a band perspective, I'll be honest. Um, and I'm not sure if it was because we really didn't sense that there was a lot of community to involve ourselves with, or Hey, maybe we just didn't know how to reach out. But for the longest time, we weren't a part of the music scene, you know, uh, unless you're one of our friends, you would have no idea that we've been a band for like 10 years. You know, um, we just really weren't a big part of the music scene here. And like I said, it was probably like little column A, little column B. We didn't really reach out. We probably didn't feel like there was a lot because, you know, it was a classic, like, even if you play with a band, you know, chances are you've never met any of them before. You've never heard the band before. Like now, I mean, I've heard, I've heard of and heard the music of, oh man, if I sat down and made a list, I'll bet you I could come up with 25, 30 projects like in this tri-state area probably more probably easily. more yeah, yeah. That, well, i have I'm spreadsheets like where i could probably either name a song or i could describe a song like where it's a song you're yeah, on like radio you, like it really, you don't know yeah. the name of it it's but embedded you know in song. you yeah uh and that was like one or two other bands like four or five years ago yeah so i would say you know i think what really happened from our end because i know there's a lot that's been happening and growing in the scene we could talk about that all day and that's really exciting you know that's one of the things that makes me real excited to be involved not only in my band but also in our promotion company but from our end we were gonna move down to nashville we were considering moving the band down to nashville okay because like you know we didn't look at this like hey you know there's a lot of opportunities here we could really do something with music here we're like you know we're just gonna waste away here there's nothing happening here well and when he says that like i mean literally like packed up some of our stuff, met a real estate agent. He yeah. had a job interview. Uh, I had a job interview, interview. like yeah. took his bassist with us. We stayed down there for a week. Most like, of the band was supposed to be there and we had some issues. <laughs> bands oh. often do. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. Um, so we went down there. Um, we realized that Nashville was not Lollapalooza on a street corner. Like we were hoping. <laughs> uh, and we also talked to some people down there because there is a lot of industry down there. And we were able yeah. to speak with some people and they said, you know, what you're looking for, you're looking for a place where the clubs are popping and there's a lot of just like there's a huge rock community present and they're out every weekend and they're at all these clubs. They said, I'm not sure if that exists anywhere anymore. You know, absolutely, absolutely, yeah, that's right. my thought. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so we kind of came back a little bit discouraged, but uh, we had a conversation, Julie and I and Paul, my bassist, he was able to make the trip and we kind of decided we were like, uh, what we need to do is, cause I remember we were talking about a band who'd only been around for like three months and had like a thousand likes on social media. 
And we were just kicking around because we were trying to organize the band and get more serious about the project. And we were like, how did they do that? We still don't have a thousand likes, you know? Um, and I think Julie said they go to a lot of shows. Um, they know a lot of people and they're just, they're a part of what's going on. I'll be honest, like at the time, it didn't really excite me. Like, oh, I'm going to get to go to a bunch of shows. I was like, okay, I got to go to a bunch of shows now, <laughs> you know? And sure. we came back and- uh, Paul's been busy with stuff. So he, he's not there as often as we are, but he makes it out. But she and I just really jumped in with both feet. We were like, well, since we're not, cause we had this big plan, we're going to move. We're not doing that. We got all this like gusto. We got all this energy. We need to do something with this. So, you know, we and it was cool. Cause once we started doing that, we realized like there were a lot of people doing a lot of things that we didn't know about. And then we actually like took a genuine interest in other people. And that's something I think like, as human beings, you almost have to train yourself to do because everyone's interested in what they have going on. Like everyone, you know, we're here on a podcast talking about what we're doing because it's our life, but like everybody else has something going on too. And like, it's hard to like take that time away from yourself and what you're doing and be like, you know what, I'm going to devote this time to someone else today. And once we started doing that, like, I was like, there's people doing really cool stuff here and I've never even like given it the time of day. Yeah. I think that you know, Jerry, you had mentioned, you know, not feeling like you were a part of the scene and your band wasn't a part of the scene. And I think a lot of it really just comes down to communication mm -hmm. and how important communication is and how easy it is to overlook that. Mm -hmm. You know, we could play a show with one of the best bands I've ever heard, but if I don't get the chance to talk to them or right. maybe I do get a t chance to talk to one of them, and they're kind of just like Stand not office, pleasant or, or just straight. Yeah. I'm not going to give a fuck about that band moving right. forward. Sure. It's like, yeah. I don't care how good your band is. I don't have time for assholes. Absolutely. Right. So I think it's one thing that just, it's really important to just go out to events or even if you're only going to shows that you're playing, still take the time to talk try to, to try to associate with those other people. Cause either, What's the worst thing going to happen? Right. Either you're going to make a new friend <laughs> or you're going to realize that the people in that band suck and then don't play any more shows with them. Right. right. You know, there's no reason to associate yourself with jerks. Right. Absolutely. So that's something that I had a really hard time with for a long time, just because, you know, I came into art from the perspective of, you know, being somebody that was bad at talking to people. I know. So, I've heard you say that on this podcast before, too. And like, it actually really surprised me. And then I thought about like, just how like a lot of artists are. And I'm like, well, I know a lot of people are just like, I'm a, I'm an extrovert, obviously. I, I mean, I think that's pretty obvious for like anyone that knows me. I'm, I'm a talkative person, but I don't consider myself an artist. And a lot of the people that I know that are really creative, like that creativity comes a lot of times from within. And so there's that introverted nature. Yeah. I'm actually really curious about like your story and your background in terms of like, what were you it's doing? It's a wild ride. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, side note, I've known him for like 20 plus years yeah, I know, now. I know. So like um, he's, he's qualified to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, what I'm curious about is, you know, how involved you are now in the music scene and the art scene to some degree, just, you know, creativity. And how you, you know, everybody that's in your life is a part of this community. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you devote a lot of your time and your energy to it that like you don't have to, neither if you have to. Right. But like, I feel like Jerry has a little bit of an extra push because like he's in a band and, you know, there's that like that energy. And I'm like, well, I'm in a band. So right. I relate with like the energy of wanting to help other bands. Mm -hmm. And do you feel like your energy just is like, a, a result of like being, you know, with Jerry for so long and being friends with all of those people through that. Like, what is the energy in you that makes you want to take time out of your day to like organize events, help him <laughs> follow his passions, help other people get their stuff off the ground? So I feel like that's a, that's a rare quality. I, I love music and I love art. Like I'll say like the one thing I was raised with like a really like inherent appreciation for art, regardless. Like my dad would take me to the arts festival every year when I was younger. My cousin who is like almost like a brother to me is an artist down in Florida. He works for like the Ringling School of Art and Design. And so like, I just always really admired him. And he was like, he's 13 years older than me. And so he was kind of coming up in the era whenever like MTV was like, super cool. And so he would, when I was a kid, like sit down and show me how cool, super like, cool, super cool. <laughs> like, way cool. Like, dude, I had videos like, I, cause I love music. Like I had literally like 
those VHS five hours of like music videos where I have like two or three of them that I taped myself. I, I wish love I, that. Hell yeah. I wish I saw, like, I think I gave them to my nephew, so, which, so what, I know what, they're safe. What music were you going out of your way to tape back then? I don't want to like sidetrack too much, oh but God. I got to know. Uh, like everything. Like I like pop music. I liked, I liked the grunge explosion. I love rock music. I, I remember. Okay. So like my cousin showed me the Metallica unforgiven video, Hell like yeah. sat down with me and was like, <laughs> and like, I was probably like nine and, he was, and I, I was like scared too. Cause I was like, it was so like, <laughs> it's dark. I, I know. And he, was, and he like, I wasn't old enough to really understand like the symbolism. And so he literally like explained it to me, like, you know, this guy, he's like going through this, like, you know, inner battle and he's digging himself out of this, this prison. But you know, like there's like, it's like not just in physical form, but in my mind, like I couldn't, I wasn't that deep yet. So like, I'm thinking sure. there's a real dude in a freaking hole somewhere that digging. Poor him. old man is trapped in there. Someone needs to go get him. <laughs> <laughs> But like, so I had like an active imagination and I feel like, like that kind of thing. Like I like to sing when I was younger. Like I like to like draw and stuff, but like, I don't know. Like I like people, like I really do. And like, I feel like I like there, like there needs to be people in any scene that aren't the people like whether it's the music scene or the art scene or whatever, that aren't the creators, because like, I think it, you hit on a major point there. What? You know, we're talking about what's going on with the scene and like the problems with the scene. There's way too many goddamn musicians. <laughs> Did you see, ever see that, uh, that meme? It's like uh, musicians and the sound guy or musicians and promoters or musicians and venue owners. He's like, cause he's, it's a groundskeeper Willie talking about how brothers and sisters are natural. Oh, okay. Like okay. Like, yeah. Musicians and promoters or musicians and sound guys or musicians and venue owners. He's like, he's like, damn musician. <laughs> They ruin music. <laughs> I, 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 mean, I agree. I, it's true. <laughs> I, 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 I do. Um, I do think that I have a, a statement kind of on the, the too many musicians thing that w we will get to. I'll probably forget. And that was a, but, that was a joke. I will say that. But uh, ultimately your, so your story is just like growing up around all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And then now that you're older and have, you know, some time and means to help make things happen. Yeah. It's a healthy hobby to have. Well, I have, I feel like some people have, everyone has a skill. Like, obviously like you're an amazing singer. You like, I, like you can flow like you're, that far. well, you are shut up everyone. <laughs> Dude, he's so modest, but no, like, like when I listened, like the first time I heard Sykes and I like heard you rap, I was like, damn, like he's like really good. Like, and I mean, I, was, I, I will say I was impressed. I, like, and we went to your CD release and I can't remember who we were listening to, but I heard the opener and I was like, damn, that white boy can flow. I was like, <laughs> I wonder if Sykes can hang with this. And then I saw you come on. And I was just like, Oh shit. Okay. Yeah. But it's like, everyone's got like a skill or a talent, you know, and you got your moves down up there. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, that's what's up. Yeah. But well, like when you meet someone as like a metal person and you, you know, obviously like you've got that game going on too. And your band, like gray Walker, like they're like just the dynamics and the guitars and stuff like that. They're super tight. And like, I just think it's a really great project. So it's like, you look at like, you know, artists and like, you know, even visual artists and you see these talents that people have. And I think like one of the things that people, I've heard this before on other podcasts is like creative, the idea of being creative can be really like intimidating to people that don't create like tangible art, but there's like a form of creativity and conversation. There's a form of creativity in business and like what I'm drawn to, like, I like, you know, like I like rock music and metal music and like, I like cool hip stuff. And like, if I can use my creativity to like be a part of that world because I have communication skills and I'm organized and like, I can do things like that. It makes me, I get the same like satisfaction is probably like when you like, you know, create a new beat or like have a new flow or whatever, or when you write a new song, like it's like, it's, it's like satisfying in that way. Well, I can contribute because like, it kind of sounds like she just up and decided to start doing this. Uh, we started organizing shows for my band. Yeah, uh, we got involved too. with organizing shows at the Fun House. Uh, our buddy Jacob, shout out Jason, shout out to Jason and the Crucible Project. <laughs> if I, yes, thank you. He'll really thank appreciate. That. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've been making a list. Thank you, this person, this person, that person. He I've totally forgotten. forgot. Jason, Jason's just looking. <laughs> like, He's standing out in the like, crowd, like so. Fuck me, right? I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That is. Me. I was like, I was like watching him from the crowd, like being like. 
crisp project. <laughs> and it just didn't even know. Yo, this is not one time. No, it's this not. Is an it, but this happened recently. Yeah. Jason, <laughs> Jason said he wants you, a well, shirt the, that says, because fuck me, right? No, the problem <laughs> is it like it's really easy to forget about the people you're closest to because right. exactly. you spend so much time trying to remember the other ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you. That's for that. totally I'm true. gonna use that with Jason. It's thank because you. we're so close. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> anyway. Oh, so, so good. <laughs> Jason had it in with the fun house. We all did a big show. It was Winter's Descent, uh, Never Wake, Resistance 13, Alter the Design, and Silence Follows. Uh, and we it's did a, a show. I know. Yeah, it's it, the only well, time we've ever did, done five bands, we never do it again. Did not, it, went really well. it went really well. It did go really well. It's it just really so well. much to organize. It's yeah, a lot. It's a it lot. was a huge band. Yeah, it's a nice way of saying it's a huge band. Yes. It was a anyway, huge band. Yes. Hell did, yeah. That's like 30, 30 year olds. Yeah. Fuck, you have no idea. <laughs> yep. And like, well, and that was. <laughs> it's like. It's like uh, so for that show, though, I came up with that idea for the. On methamphetamine. <laughs> so like we did the poster had like all chicks yeah. wearing band shirts. That that was my idea. Yeah. And everyone made fun of me, but it was. They didn't. They, they, everyone they, poked everyone fun. was that like, "That was a really cool idea." We had like a bunch of like attractive females who we knew, and we put them in the band shirts, and we branded the show. Like it was cool, man. Yeah, but people. Not everyone got it though, because I was in his band shirt, and everyone's like, "So, are you guys all in a band now?" And it doesn't matter. No, <laughs> like the logos are right there on the flyer. Like, come no, on. it's because people don't <laughs> expect. It. If that was, a yeah, it was. It was thing, unique. It was different. If, if it was perfect. Anyway, people don't take the time to pick out nuance and things anymore. It's a bummer (laughs) just coming from somebody that does, you know, graphic design and I do a lot of flyering for my shows. It's Mm -hmm. like, it has to be fucking simple. Right. Otherwise people are not going to take the time to pick out the detail. It all has to be just fucking right right there. Hit Mm -hmm. him over the head with it. And if you can throw a little bit of creativity into something clever, maybe I try that's cool. But once you get away, if somebody has to take two seconds to think about something to make a connection, no, no, you screwed up. Uh And that's like, cause the, the, (laughs) you know, the photo shoot that we did, it led to us doing like, a lot of times we will do like a photo shoot and a flyer for the shows and it's become part of the branding for the shows. Um, people have told us that's how they know our series. Cause not every, not every Shout everyone out has first time. angel media and John. Oh yeah. Yeah. She's, she's done a great job. <laughs> yeah. 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 We got a, yeah. yeah she, she, we deserves, got a, we she deserves, deserves that too. Yeah. 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 She's awesome. And I'll make it louder for her. There yeah. You go. Yeah. That uh, went away. Well, I'm oh, sorry. We tried. Yeah, yeah, you did thought she's counts. got a whole team now that, that goes out to everybody at first angel media. Yeah. For real. Team working for her now. But anyway, you know, we started branding the show around, not branding the shows around, but using the, doing really professional looking flyers as part of branding the show. And that's how some people, you know, they got kids, they got work, they, maybe they can't make it out to a show, but they're aware of us. Like, oh, you guys are the ones doing the flyer. Like we really did like a cool cannibal flag. Christmas and yeah, we had our friends had it. Oh, yeah, table. I remember yeah. that. That's yeah. fucking awesome. Yeah. 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 Exactly. yeah. So I mean- I remember all this stuff. Like yeah. it was, I remember whenever we first had that meeting that I referenced earlier and you were telling me about the ideas for flyers that mm-hmm. you, that you had done before. I was like, oh, I've seen all of these fucking things. Right. I know, I know who I'm sitting with. Right. Mm-hmm. I get it. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so- we started organizing shows at the Funhouse because we had such a great turnout that his contact at the venue, uh, Jesse Prentice, who is an awesome guy. Jesse's awesome. Yeah, Jesse has He's like us so many times. He's that I would guy. hit the clap button, but it's played out. I know. We don't, yeah. yeah here, I'll I'll I'll... <laughs> he went to Jason and said, do you guys want to do a regular rock and metal night here? And we didn't expect that. We didn't know. I mean, the first time you organize your own show, you've always counted on you know, other people being the go between, between you and venues and stuff. One time we rented out, my band rented out, um, it was altar bar. That's how long ago it was. Uh, and we picked a Sunday night, which as you know, can be a little dicey. <laughs> yeah. And dude, plus we rented it. We played out of pocket. Oh, we went into Hawk over that show and we never, we were like, we're never doing this again. But other than that, it's always been another promoter organizing the show. And we right. did, we were like, we don't know if anybody's going to come, you know? Mm-hmm. And it was a great night. Me, her and Jason, we all kind of, stood there it was right before the, the opening band went on and we looked around and it was a full room there at the fun house and we were just like that's great you know we had that moment where we were just so anyway we started um organizing shows at the fun house and eventually i you know i started talking to her and i said i think what we're getting into is doing promotions so if that's what we're doing we might as well just start a company and start doing it because the one thing I remember saying to somebody at Denny's, actually. <laughs> Hell yeah. So many great Hell yeah. Shout outs to Denny's. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, oh, I remember funny. saying, you know, what we're doing, what we're doing is really cool. They better sponsor this episode. I, I'm saying, saying. Well, no, I should put a fucking Denny's logo on the fucking screen. Start the beat sponsored yeah. by your local Denny's. Hey man, if Denny's sponsors this, like. Serving know. drunks at 3 a.m. <laughs> since 19. 
Uh, but uh, I remember saying to someone, I said, Event what we're doing is cool, but I said, eventually, if we really want to help the scene grow and be, oh my God, he's finding a Dennings logo. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> if we Serious. really want to try and facilitate what we really want to do, which is is create you know, a platform for bands who who really want to get you know, grow their fan base and, and, you know, get seen, uh, as more than someone who's just kind of, you know what I mean? Dicking around playing in their garage. <laughs> yes. There it is. I said, eventually some, someone's going to have, cause at this point it was just a bunch of friends organizing. I'm totally shows. going in there and asking for sponsorship. <laughs> I'm not kidding. But I think the defining moment where we were like, we got to start a company was I looked at a friend of mine. I said, well, eventually someone's going to have to bring a budget to the table because you can only do so much until right. you're talking about upfront investments and things like that. Yeah. And at that point, it's like, oh, what are we going to do? Are we going to pull our money or, we, you know what I mean? We're going to ask the bands who are involved in the show. And it's like well, you get to that point and you have to have a budget behind what you're doing or it's not going to go anywhere. Yeah, I think that I understand why you know, once you get into monetary situations, how that can be really scary for a lot of bands. Absolutely. But it's, I mean, I think that if you have your shit together and you're confident, mm -hmm. you know, getting together a few hundred bucks for a show isn't that big of a deal because you can make that money back right. easily as Absolutely. long as you just put in the extra effort. Yep. And also back to communication, just telling people like, hey, you know, like we want you guys to make money. Right. But the only way that you're going to be able to walk out of the show with a few hundred bucks is if you for no better way of putting this, if you put in a few hundred bucks worth of work, yeah, which is actually taking the time to text people, call right. friends, let Absolutely. them know, have them come out to the Absolutely. show. Well, and that's I mean, why those funhouse shows, like the Crucible shows that we do, that's part of that series, like those are all ticketed shows. And we do have bands sometimes that are like, I don't do that anymore. And I'm right. like, we don't have a minimum and we're paying you way more percentage wise than you're probably going to find anywhere else. But that does keep people accountable. Typically from what we've heard, you know, yeah. Our, yeah. our shows tend to pay out. I mean, more than what a lot of other, you know, ticketed situations right. are willing to do. And in back to the nuance discussion, anybody that is afraid of selling tickets for a show just means that they're afraid to promote. Yeah. And which they're means afraid they're to not be direct. They're not going to get people out to the show. Absolutely. So either way, right. It, maybe they're not the best fit for what you want to do. Right. I don't want to say that they're not a band that you should work. You should no. or shouldn't work with. Right. Cause no. that would be mean, but I mean like, come no, on, man. stop being fucking babies. Sell some tickets. No, here's the thing. Call though. your friends, no, call your mom. Wait, and here, here's something that I think should be addressed is that there are bands that do very well, um, that do promote well and they do draw well. Because yeah. of their business model mm -hmm. or whatever, how their lives are, they don't like selling tickets unless it's a national. And we respect that. Right. And we just say, okay, there's certain situations where we're going to put you on a show. We'll put you in a door split situation, you know, yeah. yeah, just because they, you know, and they're, I would rather someone was upfront with me. And that's what yeah. we tell somebody, you know, I we don't have that, yeah. ticket minimums. We don't do pay to play. Cause that's honestly the reason why, like at no point in time was I like, you know what I really want to do. I want to be a promoter <laughs> at no point in time. Like I really wanted to be a singer. I really wanted to do a lot of things in my life. Being a promoter was not one of them, yeah. but you know, the situation, like you said, the experiences we've had as what that I've had as an artist trying to get shows together. Um, when you sell 50 tickets, uh, for fifteen dollars a piece, and then you make two whole dollars a ticket. Part of you just man, you see this fat stack of cash that you not only ran around selling tickets to make that money, but also now you're you know all the hours that went into the songs and, and totally the art form. But I, I I do want to push back against that statement. Just to, I know you just kind of threw out some numbers, sure. but like I feel like for a local band bottom of the totem pole situation. Right. If you're selling a ticket for 15 bucks and you're getting two bucks, I still think that that's a pretty fair percentage of that ticket sale. If you keep in think in mind, okay, like, well, maybe you're opening up for three or four bands that are on tour. Sure. And, I and they're getting money from that ticket. Right. The venue's getting money from that ticket. I and then I don't right. think there's a problem with a promoter even getting some money from that ticket. No, no I mean, I hear, dude, I but hear. so hard, it's like, you know, like work. It takes two bucks time. for a ticket. Like, you know, it's like, obviously it's like, you know, sure. there's a lot more that goes into this, but it's part of and, and building. I'm, I'm glad you did say that. But after years of being in that situation, I didn't mean to piss all over that, you know, as a business model, because, you know, I've heard promoters say it and they're right. You know, I have bills to pay, especially you're paying a band a guarantee to come in. You yeah. have to pay the venue. I mean, there, oh, dude, there are I, a lot. Um, we played a show once where, Gray Walker, we did a ticket sale and it was a whatever, however many per ticket. And we sold like 75 tickets for the show. Mm -hmm. And the promoter 
you know, was paying us out for our ticket sales. And he kind of like laughed to himself and he was like, you're making more money than the guarantee of one of the touring bands right now. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Right. It's Cause you hustled, but it was, and it was like, it was one of those things where it was like, you know, we're playing with a, some touring package that had like fucking like six bands. Sure. On it. Right. And the, the bottom totem pole band on that, they're probably getting, I, I don't know. They're what, just barely making it. Was, it yeah. yeah, it was, it right. was, it was under, it had to have been under 200. Right. Yeah. You know, and right. that's kind of wild. But I mean, if you times that times, you know, 30 mm-hmm. and you're put on a tour package, you didn't have to do one ounce of work to organize. Yeah. That's not the worst money in the world for no. a starting band. No, no. And I didn't mean to piss all over I, that, I I, that. No, I'm glad you said that because that wasn't my intention in saying that. But I think you asked what kind of experiences got me to the point where I wanted to get into promotions. It's because you either got to organize your own show, usually, usually at a smaller venue, you know, where they're doing a ticket split. And I've been to some great shows. There's great venues where you can come in and do a door split. Like we've had some, some really good experiences working with howlers. Uh, Black Forge is great. I'm really looking forward to the new Black Forge opening. Um, there are really good venues that are like smaller venues, you know, where they're mainly, they don't do, I mean, I can't remember ever being in a ticketed show at howlers. Um, yeah, no, and, they barely charge promoters. Right. And that's what I mean. Like there's really good situations where you can do a smaller show and you can easily organize it yourself at a couple bands. But when you get into certain situations where there's a lot more money at stake, you know, you got to rent out the venue. I mean, you're looking sometimes at security and, you know, uh, insurance. paying the nationals, the insurance. Yeah. I mean, that promoter really can't just give bands a whole large percentage of their That's, ticket sales. And I understand that completely, but from a band's perspective of years and years, and this is where mainly our shows are coming from. You get what I'm saying? That's where totally. I looked at it and said, you know what? I think there's a better way to do this because here's the other thing though. I've been in plenty of situations where there was no national headliner, you know, where it was just a smaller, you know, single person promoter. Mm. <laughs> who basically rented out like the Rex on a Sunday night. And then they're like, oh, it's a really good opportunity. You'll get a lot of exposure for your band. And, <laughs> you know, he's charging $12 a ticket. And you're still in that situation where it's all local bands, but it's like, oh, well, you get $2 a ticket. It's like, you're playing the Rex here, buddy. I mean, come on now, you know? Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, like, it's like, I've, go fuck yourself. Yeah. Right. I've been in that situation plenty of times where there weren't a lot of upfront expenses and it was just someone who found a way to sucker bands that didn't really know much about how things work. And they're like, well, this is my only opportunity oh, yeah. to play there's, the Rex. There, there's definitely people you that know. are like that. And, yeah. fuck well, and most those of people them right don't ever, last right. long right. either. Fuck no. Right. Fuck. No, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I will say that like, it's not promotions. If you're really like invested in getting into it and being like for real about it, it's a long game. It's not like something where if you think you're going to like go into it and like make bank, trust me, that is not, not if you're doing it right. You know what I mean? Because when you do stuff, cause it's all about relationships. And if you go out there and you make a name for yourself by taking care of yourself first and not taking care of the bands first, there's only so many bands in the city and they're not going to want to work with you anymore. Yeah. So it's like, you know, if you're really going to actually try and, you know, have some longevity in that business, you better be ready to make sacrifices initially. And like I said, when we set up our business plan, like when, when we did the, you know, our first like actual, like kind of like look at like, how are we going to do this as a real business? I set a top limit of what I expected to lose for the year. And that, and that was, and that was, and I worked backwards from that. And I stayed in budget, but I mean like any real business, real business is going to lose money for probably the first like one to three years. And so like, I was like for our first year, I want to, I don't want to lose more than this second. I mean, I don't look at that as a loss. That's an investment investment. It's yeah. an upfront investment. Exactly. Like I expected my initial investment for the first year to be X amount of dollars. I stayed in budget of that. I wanted to cut it in half the second year. So we're like, Pretty much like See, around that. Side. She's good at this stuff. You know? <laughs> like, is it just a weird hobby that you know? She's actually really, no, uh, no. I, I, I know really, she's very good at it. She's really good at like, and I have a whiteboard to go back to. <laughs> go, Hell yeah! Things I- to go Hell back yeah. to the story. You know, when we started organizing shows at Funhouse, and we're like, oh well, you know, before we started to to actually do it as a company and form Twist of Fate, she had an idea for a show called Femme Fatale. And I tell people about this all the time because it was her baby. She got the idea for the show. I think you got the idea for the show while we were in bed together, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> I can't believe you're telling people this online. What? We Hell yeah. I mean, oh my God. Get the clap for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a. Did, oh, I yeah. like, did I turn like red a little bit? Okay, sorry. 
It's great. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. <laughs> well, I mean, come on. We're supposed to like get intimate. This oh, is like yeah. the Donahue show. Okay, where we're supposed right, to right. Stuff. Okay, yeah, yeah. This is like right. Tyra Banks, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. So anyway, uh, moving on from the sexual encounter that sparked the idea for the show. Bingo. <laughs> She told me I'm right dying. after, too. She's like, you know, I got this great idea while we were uh, in And Congress. Terry's like, what are you thinking about? Right. Like, I'm like making business it's plans like, uh, and stuff. You know, we, <laughs> it's Which a, is not to say. It's an opportunity for creative hey, inspiration. Oh, it, yeah. It was a very <laughs> inspired like, hell yeah. Hell yeah, situation. I mean, yeah. this is not to indicate that, like, you know, my mind was wandering. It was just like all the things came together at the same time. And it was like, pow. Yeah. I don't want you to think she has like a Vogue magazine on this. Uh, <laughs> anyway, you don't stay 20 married 20 years if that's the case. Trust anyway. me. <laughs> uh, so she told me she had this really good idea for this show and she wanted to call it femme fatale. She wanted to do a photo shoot with like, you know, uh, women from the scene, like with knives and swords and stuff. She had this big idea. Uh, yeah, See? exactly. See, right. You know, you, you get the it. branding. I mean, it just, <laughs> The marketing does itself from there. Well, and at the time, like I wanted all female fronted bands and that was before female fronted bands was not. Became a dirty word. PC in the, to say. Oh, so. sure. sure. <laughs> Which I won't get into, but I mean, it's. Bands I, who happen to be fun, fronted by females. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. That was, it was just per chance that they were all fronted with females. But yeah. No, but honestly, I, cause I, way. what the idea was is that I wanted to celebrate women in the scene because I right, do. There you go. And I do feel like to a point, like. It's you not know, like we cashed in and made a ton of money. It was really enough. No. She wanted to, you know, focus. it was like a pet project to see if I could actually she do wanted something to focus myself and from celebrate start to women in the scene. And she had a clever yeah. way for how to brand the show. And mm -hmm. it was really successful. Yeah. Um, it's to date to been date, like yes. one of our most successful shows. Yes. Yeah. I think, you know, just branding any event in general, making it something bigger than like, oh, come to our yeah. band practice. <laughs> At a venue, we're, we're all gonna wear t-shirts, yeah, uh, yeah. and sandals. Make it, make it, make it, make it something bigger than itself. Right. Even if, even if like low key, it isn't anything bigger. I mean, if it's, it's sure, exactly. you still got to present it as something. Yeah, right. it's bigger. like right. when you go and to a restaurant and they serve you your food. You know, you want a little bit of presentation, especially right. if you paid for that meal. And you know, you're not at a Mickey D's. You don't want it showing up. Like, do you want your fillet? <laughs> you're at Denny's. You're somewhere classy, <laughs> yeah, motherfucker. Right. With, with plates. <laughs> Right. You know? <laughs> right. Uh, when you get your filet mignon and you paid all this money for it, do you want it to show up in that one of them cardboard things that they serve you a Big Mac in? You no. know what I'm saying? Okay, yeah. like, no. It might be a really good filet mignon, but when you're at a decent restaurant, they don't serve it to you in a Big Mac uh, cardboard <laughs> container. You know, it doesn't say filet o mignon like your filet of fish, you know? And I, know <laughs> I know that sounds ridiculous, but think about it. Like you want a little bit of presentation. See, you don't want it to the look parallels like they, with food and you don't want it to look like they cooked like, it, it on the floor. You want yes. it to look nice. And that's what the whole deal. And it's not just about like packaging and how you present it. It's really like branding is a challenge because you have to look at, well, what is this? What is the spirit of this? What is the essence of this? How does it and feel? Then how how does do it? we make yeah. that? How do we convey that? So, you know. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> We're now going to pitch We're this idea to Denny's. <laughs> so, <laughs> Denny's filet mignon. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, we fucking, you know, we, we, we talked about, we got Twist of Fate, yeah. Origins, both of you, Winter's Descent. We talked about it. Um, real quick before we move into the next segment. Are there any dates that you want to throw out there for upcoming Twist of Fate? Twist of, twist of Fate. The <laughs> <laughs> twist of Fate Productions events. Okay, um, so I'll do the Twist of Fate Productions events. Yes, please do. They're all in my brain. All right, so uh, July 19th, we have our next, um, actually, no, sorry, first, I was about to confuse them. Don't let me do this. No, July 19th is going to be, I have two, we have two shows, yeah, actually. Don't screw this up. I just told everyone how good you are. I know, I know. I got nervous. You really put me on the spot. <laughs> Pressure. Oh. Okay, July 19th. Both of these shows are at the Funhouse of Mr. Smalls. The first one is actually from the headliner that you referred to us. So Heartsick is going to be coming to town uh, with a band called Lumens that is so Heartsick is from Michigan. 
Lansing, Lansing Michigan, Lansing. shout outs to Hartsick. Yeah. Really, I mean, really, really good friends oh of Grey Walker. We love those guys. So they're awesome live. We, we have yeah. a good time. We appreciate yeah. the recommendation because they've been yeah. really good to work yeah, with. Yeah, so, so easy to talk really to. Cool. Super yeah, they're easy awesome. to communicate with. No no awesome. One more word I don't know yeah. type yeah. emails. Actual no, emails. No emails yeah. with the equivalent of a blank stare. They've been really great to work <laughs> with. Yeah, those guys are awesome. Yeah. yeah. So um, I did get our good friends in Raina Z as direct support for awesome. that one, uh, which I think is going to be a really great fit. Uh, and then they're bringing a band called Lumen from, I think, Augusta, Georgia. Uh, and then we also have Gator Shakes, who I also met through you because they yeah. were at one of your shows, Fuck too. Yeah. We um, saw them. For shout the outs to the Gator Boys. Those oh. dudes are awesome. We saw them for the first time at uh, Millville Mill Music Fest. I walk in and they're in the middle of their set and there's inflatable alligators, <laughs> swimming pool toys flying all around the place. We and I'm like, just like, we want to work with these guys. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can work with this. Exactly. I can sell this. <laughs> yeah. Those dudes Where's are those awesome. Conference they're fucking awesome. I was like, Gator Shakes, how do you come up with an, ah, uh? I get it. It all makes okay. sense. Yeah. It all makes sense. So that's going to actually that show had to get moved from another show. So we originally had that announced somewhere else and there was just a mix up with the scheduling. So, Again, another time where Jesse Prentice came in and saved our asses. Jesse uh, saves the day. I'm like, you know, hey, I'm in a spot. Is there any chance the fun house is actually open on this date? I totally expected them to say no and it's open. So we didn't have to change anything about the show, move the whole lineup to the fun house. Ten dollars the door. That's on July 19th. That's a Friday. Doors are at 730. Show starts at 830. And Hell then yeah. uh, July 20th is our next edition of the Crucible Project. And that's going to be a little bat. Trisha's birthday party. The girl is turning 30. Shout out. Trish is I know. Trish. Trish is awesome. She's we so We love great. you, Trish. Yeah. Give her the full applause. There's there's too many people to applaud. I know. So I know. Um, I know there's going to be someone that I forgot keep at the end of this. Going. and they're, I made a phone call. I'll be like, so I guess fuck me. Right. But at least it won't be yeah, Jason. At least it won't be Jason. <laughs> So, um, uh, Jason was the first shout out of the show. I want no, to, well, everybody's yeah. just getting brought up naturally. I that's know it thing, is going so. good. So, yeah. but that's going to be a crucible. So night. if you haven't been brought up naturally, you know, <laughs> step it up a little bit, get, get your shit together. You know, <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. He's, he's like, he is like literally the guy in the background. Like whenever I'm like having like the conversation, tell them, tell, and he's like screaming from the back. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to tell them that. You know? <laughs> oh, hang on a second. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Oh, no, just kidding. He's really, he's great. Um, but anyway, so that's going to be a crucible night. That's Lil Bat's birthday party. She's actually going to, I think, incorporate your bandmate Mandy's um, Little charity. Little Bats of Love. Yeah. So she's going to have a raffle going for that. And she's still kind of working the bits and pieces of that out. So that's like her project. But I know that it's going to go to benefit that. So um, there's going to be a charitable component in it as well. And the bands in the bill are the Filthy Lowdown, Playgrounds, and Han Drive. Cool. So that's going to be on July 20th and tickets for that are $10 in advance when you get them from the bands and I think this it's $12 the, first, the door. This is the first punk show we're doing, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, we're we're super about pumped this. about that too, yeah. because there's- Pittsburgh has a has a thriving punk yeah. scene here. Yeah. And yeah. we haven't been as involved in that. So we have a few friends that are kind of more in that scene. So we're trying to kind of get our- It's nothing against the pucks, the punk. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> 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 Um, it's nothing Coffee? against, <laughs> I probably could use it, uh, nothing against the punk scene, but there is sort of that, like, I would say that your ethic, your work ethic that the two of you have as promoters isn't necessarily one that traditionally aligns with a lot of the punk sensibilities and work ethics of you. people that I've dealt with. No, I get you. I do. No, I, and there's. I think there's something that. very pure yeah. and and, there's, and adolescently fun about the way that community works. I agree. But when I'm dealing with people that are my age and older, <laughs> which is I'm in my 30s, when I'm dealing with people that you know are still kind of acting like they're, you know, teenagers. Yeah. I'm like, and I'd rather not. No, but there's something to be it. said here because the punk scene is very DIY. Yeah. Um, just like uh, off the top of my head, you know. But I, what the fuck? What what you're fucking doing is still DIY. Well, and that's the distinction that I want to make is because you know, and this is she's great. I mean, she she listens to all these industry podcasts. She is constantly educating me. Um, and you know, I think you were talking about Warp Tour, how Warp Tour kind of flew in the face of the way that they were doing tours and tour packages at the time, uh, and it was meant to be more like 
you know, we're all just musicians and we want to play and we want to throw, we want to throw a show. We want to have a party. We want to have a good time. It wasn't necessarily like when it first started, Hey, let's put this huge tour together and we'll feature all these well-known industry bands and we'll make some money. You know, the, the spirit behind Warp Tour was very DIY. Um, just like I, I was going to say, I know, uh, the doom scene has that very DIY, like, you know, a lot of local doom shows, like local punk shows, I've noticed it's, it's a door split, you know, we're not doing tickets. And I think, you know, it's really to kind of combat that, Hey, let's get together and find a way to monetize what we're doing. You know, uh, when you're at a doom show, you know, instead of the horns, most times you get the beer raised. It feels like a party. It's a close knit community. And I feel like it's the same with, with the punk community. You know what I mean? Sure. It's more like a party. These are our friends. Like we're not here to make money off of you. Yes. There's costs associated. You know, there's usually like $5 at the door or something like that, but we're really not here saying, well, how can we monetize this? You know? Right. And I really respect that. Um, all I can say is like, cause, and this is something, you know, I, I believe in just throwing it out there, not dancing around things. Certain people have looked at us like you're doing a local show and you're doing tickets. Like we don't really do that. We do a door. People come down, they pay for the door. You know what I mean? I don't have to run around selling tickets and stuff like that. Like some people have said to us like, Hey, I don't want to do that. And that's not how, unless you've got a national where, you know, you have this, like you, you said, we, we have this major expense that we need to address. Like you, you're going to have to sell tickets for this. It's a local show. Why not just throw a party down at the local you know, the local venue and we'll have some fun. Um, the bands that have worked with us and played shows with us and who have done a really good job time and time again, they said, man, we may, and I'll tell you this from being in the artist position and having played mainly the shows that we're doing at Funhouse, I'm thinking about, I never walked out with that much money in my pocket because, you know, and I'm just going to throw it out there. You know, I'm not, I don't like to talk about numbers and stuff like that. But one thing that we all, uh, Julie and Jason and I talked about you know, every single, and every show is different. There's a lot of ins, a lot of outs, a lot of what have you, you know, <laughs> there's like an algorithm with the fun house that I will never understand. Um, but every <laughs> single band, every single show always walks out with 50% plus of their ticket sales. And I've been playing shows in this city since I was 19 years old. I can't say for sure, but the people who we talk to, they're like, you know, nobody else is doing this kind of deal for us. And that is really why we started our company. You know what I mean? Because bands have expenses. That's like the, it's like you talk yeah. about, like you always oh, say- band is such a money pit. Well, and that's one of the things I appreciate about when you're on, you know, you talk to different artists, you're like, I like that you don't shy away from the fact that like people are like, oh, let's not talk about money. Like it's weird. Like things cost money. You, recording costs money. T-shirts cost money. Yes. You know, this venues cost money. Cost you money. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That <laughs> laptop like, costs yeah, money. You know yeah. what I mean? Every single thing. And it's like, okay, so like it's a part of wor the world we live in and we all want to do this stuff together. And as long as we're all being fair with each other, like, yeah, like I'm asking you to say it to hold yourself accountable and sell these tickets. I'm going to pay you. You know what I mean? And like, if we make a little bit, like it's a shocker, like that we like, you know, that we can actually do a little bit of something for ourselves sometimes. But I mean, a lot of times, like, you know, we're just trying to get to the point where we're not like losing our asses. on this. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's, it's like, like a band. If you can get to the point yeah. where it pays for itself and you're not putting money into it, you're doing awesome. Right. And I mean, your time is worth money too. Like if you haven't gotten, and like you said, gotten to your thirties and realized like, Hey, my time's valuable. I have skills. Like, then maybe you need to sharpen your skills a little bit <laughs> and get, and get a little bit better at whatever you're trying to do. Because I believe like artists are valuable. You know what I mean? Like in the age that we live in, like creativity, I really think is going to become one of the more valuable assets we have because like all the monotonous jobs that can be done by machines eventually might be done by machines. So like, if you don't know how to do something effective and efficient, that takes a little bit of human inspiration like you might get left behind. And like, I think that those are important things to recognize. And like this community gives people an opportunity to like showcase their skills and talents and like actually feel rewarded from them. And I, you know? I want to jump in just a minute and say, we've never had any kind of attitude or look down on anyone who said, I don't want to sell tickets for a local show. I said, I completely understand that. Right. You know, uh, and sometimes we just put them on a different type of show. Yeah. Your fans yeah. aren't used to paying ahead of time and, and buying a ticket for a show. They come down, they pay the door. They're used to that. They like that. They're comfortable with that. That's your crowd. Like as, as an artist and as a performer, 
you need to know your crowd. You really need to get to know your crowd. That's a, that's a big part of branding and marketing. If you want to start taking things up a level, you know, you got to throw th things out there and see number one, what your demographic is and what they want from you, what they respond to. And if you know your demographic does not buy tickets unless they're going to see a national just because that's how they're used to doing it. I completely understand that. I completely respect that. Um, in this situation, what we're really trying to do is just get something more going. And right. like I said, you know, part of that is putting more money in bands hands because a band is expensive. Yeah. I think that another point to kind of just wrap up the ticket discussion is if you're playing in a band and you sell tickets, you're selling tickets to somebody that also plays in a band, they get it. Mm -hmm. sure. They understand what the deal is. But yeah. I think that there's sort of this like, I guess like the anonymity or whatever that bullshit word is. Anonymity. 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 <laughs> I think around, we all said it differently. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's a mystery. There's a, there's a mystery around how the ticket structure works for people that aren't behind the curtain. Right. Yeah. And I think sometimes, I mean, we've had it happen to us on several occasions with Grey Walker where, you know, we're playing a show with a national and we tell people, you know, we got tickets, buy tickets from us. And they're like, oh, well, I just got them online. Like mm -hmm. I figured it'd be easier. And it's yeah. like, yeah, it probably was. You don't understand that like, <laughs> you know, like you bought four tickets online. Right. And like, you know, that's four tickets we could have sold. And that's sure. 12 bucks less in our pocket. Yep. Well, it doesn't Absolutely. seem like a lot. I think it's just important. Like, like, like you're actually helping us. Like, it's like we get some, we get a little bit more of that money. Right. And that, that us being able to sell tickets for like whatever promoter helps us build, build that relationship, build a relationship yeah. with those promoters. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the thing. Like we've gotten, we've gotten to a point with gray Walker when certain, like if metal bands come through, mm -hmm. they hit us up for right. like, Hey, like, you know, there's a metal show coming. We've worked with you. Do you want to play this show? Yeah. Right. It I mean, helps build credibility. It helps build, you know, it, like you said, you do get some finance, financial re re recompensation. Is that the right word? No. No. Recompense, maybe. <laughs> Compensation. I, wow. I would, we got, the three of us I, are I like super smart. I think you try to combine smart. two words. Recompense <laughs> or a compensation. Uh, financial yeah. uh, recoup. There, there you, you go. go. That's like the that. one. But, um, so either way, but there, there's a lot of incentive and that's why like, even whenever people will like, ask me about shows that we have going on. Like I'm always like, just hit up the bands. Like just hit up the, like, you know what I mean? Like message their page. I have never messaged a band page and said, Hey, I want to get to your show and not had them respond to me like immediately. Like, trust right. me, it'll be super easy. They'll probably drive to your house to deliver them to you. Sure. Like, and if you're, if you're weird about that, they'll probably mail them to you or leave them at the door or whatever. Yeah, like it's PayPal. 2019. We Everyone do. has PayPal. It's Come easy. On. We got PayPal. You pay palace. I'll leave your ticket for you at the will call. Easy peasy. Yeah. yeah. And it's, chances are you're going to save the service fees and all that other crap yeah. too. Communication so. is key. Just let people know. Right. And, uh, you know, don't be afraid to reach out to people. We've done it. I haven't done it personally, but uh, Joey from Gray Walker is really good. It like he'll go onto an event page on Facebook and people that are going and he'll like cold call, like message them. Yeah. yeah. Like, mm -hmm. hey, I'm in Gray Walker. You know, mm -hmm. if you need tickets to the show, let me know. Yeah. yeah. And he'll fucking drive the tickets to them or have right. Ricky will. Right. And like, we've yeah. sold a ton of tickets that way. And we've mm -hmm. like actually made fans and friends that way too. That's honestly like, I, that's how we really started. Like, like, cause I was like doing merch for him. And I was always sent like, whenever he would take ticketed shows, I would always be the one that would like drive them all around because like, I, a lot of times have that time whenever they're practicing, I'm not in the band. I don't have to practice. I can like, Oh, I've got two hours to myself. Like I'm going to go out for, you know, go to stuff freaking target anyway, I can swing by someone's house and drop off tickets for them. And that's kind of like initially how we built our network. And that's part of why when he plays a show, like it's, I try and like be always be super fair as far as like a, being a promoter and not being biased, but like, you know, I'm also still his wife and I'm still, I have a vested interest in, you know, his project too. And so like, I do still help with that part of it. And I agree because that's one of the things that it kind of frustrates me whenever like I hear people say that it's like so hard to sell tickets and I'm like, I've been doing it for years and all it is, is making like, I have coffee with people. I go hang out with people. I like when he's playing a show and I know that that's part of like my job for that show. I take it as an opportunity to spend time with people. It, a lot of time. And you've probably heard me say this before on the podcast, but if you want to like, if in order to do something, the first thing that you need, no matter what it is, is just a genuine want to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time when you hear people say, oh, it's hard to sell ticket, it's it's not that it's 
hard to sell the ticket. It's just that you don't want to do it. Right. You don't care enough to do it. Right. And you don't want to admit, you don't want to say that out loud. Like, no. I don't care about my band or my thing enough to put in this work. In the time. I couldn't be bothered with it. Exactly. Well, and yeah. here's the thing. What is it? What do most musicians want? Some people don't care. You know, if there's two or three people out there, they just love to play. But a lot of us, you know, we're performers, we're passionate. I love playing in front of a bunch of people. I'm not going to lie. And I don't know, maybe that makes me ham or whatever, but like, you know, I, we all spend so much time putting our blood, sweat and tears, putting our souls into this music. We spend time thinking about this, you know, uh, there's, there's pieces of our lives. There's pieces of ourselves in this music. You know, it is one of the art forms where you can transcend all the barriers between people where you can transcend the language barrier, uh, the barrier between any individual, the, the barrier between, I know you, I don't know you. I just can't put into words something so personal and intimate and important to me. This is like a piece of who I am. Music is one of the ways that I can convey that to someone. Someone, I guarantee they could hear your music. And they've never met you. They might understand you in a way that someone who has known you for years doesn't. They, they've never had that glimpse because they've never really heard your music, you know? Yeah. Um, so given that it's that important, I mean, I want to get my music to as many people as I can, you know? And I love playing in front of a big crowd. I just, I love it. I love seeing a huge crowd. I love the response. I love the energy. Um, since we started doing ticketed shows, that's where, and other bands who are comfortable, I'm just talking from an artist's perspective now. Because when I talk about it from a promoter standpoint, it kind of sounds like maybe, not that I have an agenda, but it's like, well, this is my business model. And I, you know, from, from a band's point of view, we started getting in these ticketed shows with other bands and it's just locals, you know? Um, but we all do a good job and we sell our tickets, you know? Forget about making money, man. We play big shows and it's a lot of fun. We get a big crowd and I spent a long time, you know, like you said, starting out, you got to pay your dues. You know, you got to play that bar at, you know, one thirty in the morning where there's like two or three people just hanging out there, you know? Yeah. Um, and the, for me, as an, I'm speaking as an artist now, the ticketed shows put us in a situation where we're able to play really big shows. I mean, sure. really big shows for a local band compared to like a dozen people. Now we can play in front of a hundred plus people and it's great. I love it. Like, no, I think it's awesome. I think, you know, my argument towards uh, like ticket ticketed shows in a positive light has a lot to do with the things that you're saying. And it just, you know, it puts some responsibility on band shoulders, which I think is great, especially if you're like an up and coming band, right. just honing those skills of like, Oh, like, you know, because I'm selling tickets for this show, I'm kind of being taken out of my comfort zone and I have to reach out to strangers. I have sure. to talk to people. I have to follow up. Mm -hmm. I have to, you know, handle money and figure out where networking. this is going. I have to do a lot of things. And those are really invaluable skills that I think Absolutely. ticketed yeah. shows give bands the opportunity to engage with. And I think yeah. a lot of people like, oh, it's like this huge burden to sell tickets for a show. But it's like, OK, well, you know, with. Greywalker, for example, it's like, okay, what's the worst thing that happened? You know, we use the internet from the mm -hmm. comfort of our home mm -hmm. to right. connect with 50 people, sell them some tickets. And then we walked out of the venue or before the show even started, we had 150 extra bucks in our band thing. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, we made some money. We connected with some people. Maybe we'll play a good show and we'll make some fans right. and the promoter's happy. So maybe we'll get some more shows. There's yeah. all of these positives. Right. Yeah. And the only negative was, it was just like, oh, we need to take time out of our day to put work into our band. Right. Sure. And that's not really even a negative. Well, and that's part of why I think like doing the, like with the Crucible Project, doing those shows. Cause honestly, like I, when we do shows outside of that right now, because we're still building as a company towards, you know, bringing national bands and all that kind of stuff. And a lot of times if it's not on that series, a lot of them are, you know, smaller shows, they're bar shows, they're door split shows. Um, but with that series, it does give, I think some bands that maybe haven't been in those ticketed situations, a chance to like, maybe they do screw up. You know what I mean? Like I've never treated a band poorly if they didn't sell well. I've never, nope. I've never not paid. I've, all, I've paid bands probably more than maybe they deserved after they like kind of bomb ticket sales because like it's, I'm able to and more, more than what their ticket sales were. We'll just say, well, yeah, that. maybe yeah. not a what they deserved. Sold, yeah. And I'll, I'll throw this out there. I don't mind patting ourselves on the back. You know, band comes in, they only sell X amount of tickets where they only literally brought in X amount of ticket revenue. And usually you get paid a percentage of that. We're like, Hey, they did a good set. We play, we paid them in excess of a hundred percent of their ticket sales. You know what I mean? Because we believe in treating people well. And we also believe that 
their art has value. Now, if you don't bring anybody in the venue, eventually the venue's gonna be like, well, I'm a business, I have bills, I'll get shut down. You know what I mean? I'll and lose my business. And honestly, like that's part of uh, us having that, you know, situation that we get to do that every month because we've been consistently accountable to the venue. Right. You know what I mean? But like, and they expect that of people's us. People's art does have an intrinsic value. I agree and that's, with that. That's a principle that I think, well, I don't think, I know, got completely lost in the internet culture and the explosion of LimeWire and Napster where the idea that music should be free. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm, I'm entitled to free music and you know from being a creator, like how much time and effort goes into that to make really good music. Music's a fucking pain in the ass, man. <laughs> it's a huge fucking pain in the ass. You know, I used to write poems. I was like, lyrics will be easy. Like 10 years later, I'm still like, man, lyrics are tough, man. You know, everybody in the band, they, I mean, if you're a good player, and especially if you're a good band, you've put so much of your time and energy into it. You know, right. your music has value. Your Absolutely. Art, your art has value. Absolutely. So we are... Over an hour now. I knew this talk was going to be long Open with the two present. of you. Oh, that's the thing. I was <laughs> going to do something fun. I was going to move into the present and try to do some uh, try to do some goofy stuff. I knew this was going to be a long one before we even started, so there's no rush. I just wanted to uh, throw that out there. I think we're at a good point now where uh, these these two lovely human beings have brought me a present, and I feel like just for the sake of the camera, you should pick it up and hand it to me. <laughs> I like this. Like I need to be presented with, with the gift. We at twist of fate, put your hand on it. It's for both oh, of us. Well, we at twist of fate would <laughs> like to present you this gift bag. I don't know what's in it. She there's, there's also one or two send stuff in there too. Oh, good. See, <laughs> okay. I, I, I feel like if people watch, I've got a gift there's, bag. There's also like, something in there for Stacy too. Oh shit. <laughs> I feel like if people watch the video, all the guys are going to be like relating okay. to me. Cause they're like, Oh, what do we, what do we get this person? I think that, the first that. thing I pulled out is for Stacy. <laughs> I don't know. You out there, people out there, let me know if you want to see me wearing this. <laughs> I don't know. Racerbacks are really in yeah, right now, Brian. Yeah, we're going to need a we're bigger sponsor on this. Then. There we go. Yeah, we need a photo <laughs> shoot in that. This is actually pretty cool. I could do a whole calendar on that. So shout outs to Raina Pelly who did our uh, logo design and shout outs to Robbie Perone who printed those for us like in the last three days. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I hadn't seen these before, so I guess that's yeah. why. Because they're, they're new. brand new. We saved that design that, for t-shirts. That exclusive mm -hmm. shit. Yeah, we yeah. had that design for over a year since we started the company and- Oh shit, I got one so, too. So yeah, you got one yeah, too. Yeah, of course. Nice. <laughs> I want you to get, to earn that, I need to see you in this first one. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to put this on go to Denny's and find myself a husband. Yes. Heck yes. That's what's up. You may have already found one, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I may have just lost one. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, this is a really cool shirt. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. I also got a uh Okay, I'm starting to see a theme here. I got a sticker. Uh-huh. <laughs> Insert shameless self-promotion here. Yeah, no, this, this is tight. This is tight. <laughs> Maybe I'll make some space on the laptop so you'll Ooh, be a part yeah. of every episode. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I don't have anything local on my laptop right now. Actually, no, there's Helltown Brewing. That's okay. and uh, Epicast. I'm not going to start going through all the stickers. Fuck that. <laughs> all right. I think I got another T-shirt here. Yeah, I know you like shitty T-shirts. I remember from I your last episode. I fucking love shitty T-shirts. <laughs> all right. Yeah, buddy. Winner's Descent. Woo! Yeah, there you go. Hell yeah. Thanks for giving me a large and... <laughs> I could actually really fucking use this. This is awesome. This is an engraved Winner's Descent keychain. And so that's from Dan. You know, Dan, that all, he, I don't even know his last name, but he goes to so many shows and he makes these things for everybody. And I want to give him a okay. proper shout out, but his, I just know his name's Dan. Well, thanks, Dan. Yeah, thanks, For the keychain. Yeah, he, he does yeah. all that. Like he does like the wooden engraving and stuff. So, so I want to um, take this opportunity now as we're uh, kind of like wrapping up and everything. We're not really wrapping up just, just yet. I do have to reset the camera though, so let me do that. Um, I want to I want to get into a couple listener questions with the both of you, just because I feel like it would be a tragedy to have you both on and not do <laughs> listener questions. Let's because especially that's, because I always ask really yeah, compelling questions. That's some of the that's some of the funnest <laughs> stuff. But uh, I I knew that again. I've said it a thousand times. I knew this was going to be a longer conversation. I do want to throw out. I know you just got some T-shirts printed, but. The next time you do t-shirts, it has to be the Denny's logo, but it says twist of fate. And it should so only, if you can design that only, for us. That would be great. And I think the only <laughs> way that you can get it, it's not a t-shirt that you sell. 
But you, you have, have to them. be. You at, have to come yep. to Denny's yep. to get the T-shirt yes. part of the Denny's. Crew. And you become, the, dude. That's what it could be. It could be like Denny's crew on the front, <laughs> and then with like Twist of Fate and the Denny's logo. I'll help you design okay. this. Okay, right, I think that would this. be really, really great. And yep. then. Uh, and then yeah. we'll have to drag you to Denny's. Let's make one, one that says, I came out at 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> all I got was no. the and all, all I almost... got was syrup on my pants and sued by Denny's. Over Hashtag there. everything <laughs> sticky. I definitely I definitely do want to come to Denny's with, with you. I don't have that much of a beef with Denny's, but I do want to throw out some of my preferred post-show places. Okay. Okay. So my number one spot that I typically go to if I go out to eat after a show is the strip district Permanis. Oh yeah, yeah. that's good. I Permanis actually, is our I can support two. that too. Dude, if we had a Permanis in North Hills, I'm sorry, Denny's would be SOL. Yeah. <laughs> for real. I mean that, that the strip district Permanis is five minutes from me and Stacy's house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's just, that's a, that's yeah. money spot because it's, yeah. Um, I mean, it's fucking Permanis. I love Permanis. Mm-hmm. I love shitty food just as much as the, the two next, of you. Yeah. No offense. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, and, uh, but again, that place is just a lot closer and it's never as crazy as you think it would be. You're right. There. It's usually Absolutely. pretty fucking chilling. Dude, we've been to Permanis, either the one in Southside or the one down in the Strip District plenty of times, um, night, especially after show. And yeah. I know a lot of them aren't open 24 hours anymore, which is a goddamn is. tragedy. Well, Permanis, that one is, but the re- what I was going to say, Eaton Park. Oh, I know you said you liked Eaton Park better. And I, I take Eaton Park over Denny's. Mm. But I, again, this is coming from my perspective. Mm-hmm. Uh, Eaton Park has way better vegetarian options than I was going to say because you're a vegetarian. I know. And, and I, I actually the, did uh, consider that. Do they that. have those options at two in the morning? Yeah. Do they really? Yeah. Okay. All right. Right on. Okay. I can go fair. to Eaton Park. At, well, the problem is that there aren't any Eaton Parks that are really open 24 hours anymore that yeah, I can I think of. That. Uh-huh. Is I there, think the Dormont the one is closed on a like, lot of them oh, closed late okay. at night now. Right. Yeah. 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 I think I the remember Dormont I went one to when I was like, it was closed. I was like, what is this shit? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I will, I will give it to Denny's yeah. for sticking true and staying open 24 hours. Uh, they, I have serving the drunks at yeah. three in the morning. Done, I've done Somebody's plenty, do plenty of on the road Denny's. I don't have any, I don't have that big of a beef with Denny's, but I think for me being here, especially if like a show ends at like 11, mm-hmm. like I, I'm not going to Denny's at fucking I'm just gonna 1130. S- and, and, and we obviously we, we patronize Denny's quite a bit, so I'm not talking shit, but I can't remember the last time I was at a Denny's before midnight. <laughs> just going to throw that out there. It's probably <laughs> been years yeah. since I was at a Denny's while the sun was up. So I, Point taken. All right. So yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll give that. Um, so yeah. I just wanna, so we're all on the same page. We want to clear the air with some of that point stuff. Taken. So I think we do. It's about time. To, Denny's uh, just tastes better at two in the morning. Get, yeah. Get, let's get these listen. Let's get Denny's off of here real quick. Back yeah. to start the beat. The show you're listening to. You better <laughs> get, get a sponsorship for Denny's. Let's get into yeah. some listener questions. All right. Shall we? All right. So Dude. I got a whole like mountain of ones that I've been saving. Uh oh. Um, are these I'm just gonna, in general? Or? Oh, these are they're, they're, none of these are for anybody specifically. Okay, these are just general listener questions. Uh, I do want to get into. Uh, I think there's some pretty good ones here. So are we gonna uh, do a lightning round, or just uh, we'll see how many we can get through. I don't want to take up too much time, but uh, you should the, totally do a lightning. The first round. one, <laughs> this first one comes from Toddy Tondera of the Thrifty Podcast. I know who that is. Ever step in animal pee or poop? Yes, I've got a better story. I have a story too that's recent, which is the reason why I wanted to answer this question. So a couple days ago, last week, I'm in the car with Stacy and like, I'm like, you know, I'm always adjusting my hat and I kind of do this thing and I'm like, what the fuck is on my hat? And and I lifted up my hat and I looked at it and there was bird shit on my hat. You know what? That's supposed to be good luck. Really? Yes. Nice. Shockingly, yeah, oh, yeah. for some yeah. for some stupid reason, yeah. So congratulations. <laughs> but yeah, I had bird shit on my hat, and I had no idea how long it had been there, when it, it happened earlier in the day, and if I was at work last all day week. with bird shit on my head, like, or if it happened, like, I don't know. But yeah, I recently got shot on by a bird last week, Toddy. So I just want to let you know about that. And I've definitely stepped in plenty wow. of animal shit as well. I grew up. <laughs> In the city, so it's just like yeah. there's shit that. everywhere. I don't even. Uh, I hope it was animal shit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> At this point, to be honest with you, you'll have that. What about you two? You go for. I, I know what story you're going to tell. So you go for. Do you really? Is it a story from a while ago? Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, I put my hand to load. 
Oh, well, I, you, I, I didn't think you were going we there. We went to no, the park I did not know you were going to there. Uh, enjoy. Um, See, surprise after some, all those years. It was a long time ago. So we, we were, went to the park to enjoy some, some smokables. And uh, okay. we were at the, one, the bubble at the park in Westview. This is before we were dating. This was a this long, was a time, long ago, time ago. And I put my ago. hand in something. I was like, I thought it was spit. Looked at it real hard. It was not spit. So I made the mistake of telling my friends. And I remember I was hanging out at my house. I was supposed to come to a band practice for my friend. And it kept calling me all night. Hey, you coming? Hey, you coming? Hey, you coming? Finally, I answer the phone. And it's uh, an acoustic <laughs> session, right? That they had kind of done an impromptu acoustic session. It's, ring. Jerry put his hand in a load. <laughs> Come by here. So, yeah. Oh, no. First oh, date yeah. ever. Yeah, that was, was that our first <laughs> no, date. I'm just Let's kidding. not call that our that, first date. I was going to say, no, it wasn't. Oh, that, was, that was pre-dating for sure. Okay, good. That's when we were just friends. Yeah, we were say, just friends. That's not one you tell the grandkids about. No, no, definitely not. <laughs> I can't believe you told that story either. You were, you were shocking Am I me. oversharing? I th- yes. I don't know. Oh. No, I thought this was supposed to be. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah. In, the, you're in the trash yeah. tree. It's fine. You can shake my hand. It was a long time ago. The skin cells have completely regenerated since then. So this is literally a different hand. So what was the- come up to me how did it get in. there I, it, it was like we heard that it was, was at a park and there was like a, it was literally like a bubble like, like it was bubble. Yeah. yeah like like you know like the top no, of the slide. i heard through the grapevine later that this shady dude used to go there and do that so it, it was spot on gross hey yeah. i would like to say that you know i'm not happy about it but he is dead now i don't think it was because of that but he has since passed on so not only so is this a brand new hand but that guy doesn't even exist anymore so, so don't let it totally say come up to me and say hi oh, you know boy get someone's dna on yet a twist of fate show yeah. <laughs> it's a good time People, our sales are going to skyrocket after this episode uh-huh 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 <laughs> what do you want some boring shit about hey we're doing a show come on down It'll be a lot of fun. I got jizzed on, right? <laughs> well, I mean, wow. it's not really quite the question, but I guess humans can be animals. Human beings are animals. Uh, it's it's something that we overlook. That, really was, too well. that was a, that was a <laughs> twist of fate on that. On that. On that. Now right there. you get the brand name. Yes, <laughs> now that you makes get sense it. Now, right? Yes. Yes. You got. You got it. Twist any? of fate. So, uh, Julie, do you have anything that deals wow. with You can't top that. You can't top that. I feel like I should. Not, I thought he was going to tell the story about the time our cats tag team and pissed on the bed and in the shower right before he went to work. Oh but yeah. Not. And they, never mind. No, I'm not. The I don't want to peed on me. <laughs> I guess I just said, uh, yeah, never mind. No, I'm done. Keep going. Just, Next question. <laughs> these things just happen to me. I don't All know right. Why. So we got a, we got a question here from uh, Kevin Riley, AKA Ooh. Walkman favorite venue and least favorite venue. Oh man. I feel like this could get me in you, trouble. I, I, you know, <laughs> I, I saw this question and I really didn't give it much of an opportunity to think about it. Um, Favorite venue for me easily would be Mr. Smalls as a whole um, theater yeah. and fun house. I think that yeah. I think the space is great. I like how they, you know, accommodate, you know, are able to facilitate smaller shows and bigger shows. Mm-hmm. The sounds great. The people were great. Yeah. Um, you know, bar staff's cool. Everything about those spaces are really great. So I would say favorite venue for me, hands down, would be Mr. Smalls. Are you even going to touch the least favorite? I was favorite? about to say. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I haven't. Should I haven't do that. I, mean, I haven't had an opportunity to think about least favorite. I mean, I think traditionally I do kind of go pretty hard on rock room and goose keys. Yeah, but I understand that they have their like, place. They the have their too. place. You yeah, know what I mean? Like I me complaining about the rock room and goose keys is like a 30 year old complaining about star Wars movies. It's like these new, like new star Wars movies. Right. It's made for 10 year olds. No way. Okay. And goose keys is a, it's for a different crowd, a different whole demographic of people. It's not for what I do. I can share a least favorite venue and I'm not going to say the name of it because I, I will, well, I will say that he played a show last August out in Manaka and I'm oh, not going to yeah. say the name of the venue, but how many fucking venues can there be? Exactly. In Manaka? Exactly. One. So if you want to figure it out, <laughs> that's on you. But this place, do- it. it doesn't have a bathroom. Doesn't have one. There was no bathroom. Does not have one. So what they that's told how you end up with jizz all over the place, like fucking <laughs> exactly. the place you're at. Exactly. Yep. No, but so they told us place when we got go there that, that. that you could go upstairs and use the bathroom upstairs. And it was someone's No, a place. It was apartment. a fucking apartment. We went up and to an apartment so- and I go up there. He's like, yeah. just knock on the door. Nobody was there. And I, you've told me this. Story. Oh, yeah. Yeah. in the guy's bathroom. He comes home. We're just looking at each other. And I'm like, like what is hey. going on? And then they locked their door yeah. after that. He was so not, yeah. no, no. I, they weren't having that. The bathroom had a curfew. Yeah. My guitarist almost got arrested out back. <laughs> he totally got caught by a cop peeing 
out back and the cop was like, what's going on? He's like, the place doesn't have a bathroom. I think the thing that like- kinda, Incidentally, they may have gotten shut down by the county. <laughs> we hope then. so. I hope the so cop too. didn't Sorry, have a look on his that. face like he was going to let that shit Yo, slide. No. I think the thing that kind of irks me about um, places like the venues that I mentioned before mm -hmm. is that it's not so much like, I, okay, like you want to have a divey venue. That's I'm all for it. Right. It's just like the lack of care that they put into- the equipment, which I mean, may yeah. have a, may be a direct result of the people that come in there and just kind of disrespect yeah. the gear. Yeah, right. It's just like it's one of those things that kind of goes back to like talking about uh, that responsibility that I feel like people in that community don't have and how it irks me. It's not so much that like, oh, they don't want to sell tickets for shows and they yeah. don't want to have money and things like that. It's just a matter of like disrespecting the gear mm -hmm. and just making it like a shit show because like things that are shitty are supposedly cool or yeah. better like and that i it's didn't like know they didn't have a sound person when we we booked one show at Gooskies. and so that and no one and i do feel like it would be the venue's responsibility to tell you because i hadn't booked ever there and he hadn't played a show there in a long time so i didn't think to ask and it wasn't like anyone told me yeah so like i do feel like there's a responsibility to like at least outline what you can and can't do yeah. as a venue. Like I understand there's, I guess there's supposed to be so. like some sort of like a, a charm to that. But like for me, I think that it's just like, I don't know, like try to take things a little bit seriously. I'm not asking for the fucking world. I don't, I'm not saying, <laughs> I'm not saying that they need to fucking like make that place look like Foxtail or some bullshit nightclub venue. You know what I mean? But it's just like, just take care of the fucking space enough. You know, that's just, that's my two cents. And tell people if you don't have a sound person. Yeah. Communication. Yeah, that, it all goes back to communication. For me, it's smoking venues. Yeah. And there's plenty general. of them that yeah. I attend regularly and, you know, I have a great time there. But as a singer, especially yeah. when I'm performing, when you're up on stage and you're just inhaling like a big windpipe of secondhand smoke, it dries your throat out. You know, man, doing those screams when your throat's all dry, it's... it's uh, yeah, you don't got to tell me I'm not a smoker. <laughs> Playing fucking, at Howlers is a nightmare for it's me. It's fucking yeah. brutal, man. Yeah, it's it really, really, really rough. And that's mainly, I'm not like talking shit on any venue that has smoking. From a singer standpoint, it's just, it's a, it's a fact. It's, it makes it more challenging. Right. <laughs> cool. Yeah, uh, so I got one more question. Uh... <laughs> Uh oh. I feel like of uh, any of the guests I have lined up, this I'm the, this you're the only right. two people I feel comfortable say, with this, bringing this, this question is, is to the table. Is this a comfortable yes, one? Let's is this, do is this it. one that we're all friends it's with? A, okay. It's a silly one. It's okay. a silly one. All right. All right. So um, Nikki asks, in what direction <laughs> do you shave your pubic hair and why? <laughs> oh, and, what's and then there's a follow up question. And what's your first coherent memory? <laughs> is it of shaving your pubic hair the first time? <laughs> Do those go together? That's a good question. <laughs> That's really a good question. Be. So, uh, I don't know. I was actually surprised to see this question because I don't know if if Nikki even listens to the podcast. If you do, shout outs to you for being there in the shadows. But uh, I, I I've been thinking about this. Um, so <laughs> I, I want I do want to say for one that she spelled pubic hair as public hair. <laughs> Mine's not public. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't have any, but it's if, uh, if I did, it wouldn't be public. I do oh, think that uh, I would say uh, in a shaving, I guess I guess you would say I shave north. Mm. north. So you're going against the grain. Is that against yeah. the grain? I, I yeah. haven't I guess so. seen what you got going on down there, but I'm <laughs> imagining. Yeah, yeah. I'm the average person that is against the grain. Yeah. Okay, so I guess against the grain is. But do you mm. start out and, south? I'm sorry, I just have to ask because I feel like. Yeah, I against. don't know the way the way all my uh, the way all my hair grows. It just it's how I've always done it. Uh -huh. Okay, and that just seems to make the most sense I get against it. the grain. I do want to say that I don't go to the skin. It is clippers. Ah, uh, yes, I don't. That's I a do different not. Story. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's no, better. No baby dick, right? Okay. for your boy over here. So you got the buzz balls going on. <laughs> buzz balls, right? Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Um. So. Sure. I'll, I'll just sure. go ahead and answer that I, I get waxed and I've also had laser hair removal. So, Ooh. and I've talked to, I've, women are so intrigued by this. And so I'll just, I'll just fucking talk about it because I don't care. Cause oh, I've, yeah, I've talked about it like with people before is that number one. So what I'll tell you about laser hair removal is that you have to go several times before it's totally effective. Be careful. Um, it can cause hyperpigmentation and it can 
you can get burned. Picture okay. getting shot so, by one of the guns that the stormtroopers had. Yeah, like choo, choo, choo. <laughs> yeah, like that burning <laughs> hole it left it because I had it done once too. Yeah, just to see. He was wow. doing the chest yeah. for a while. Yeah. So because yeah, so um, mm. we went and had it done together one time. I was getting a really like mangy looking chest rug, and I was. Like, <laughs> I was sitting there watching TV and it was a commercial and I'm kind of bored and I just noticed I was sitting there twirling my fingers through and I looked down and I was like, that shit's got to go. Oh, yeah. totally. Yeah. yeah. So, and then. But so, now I, I'm doing the buzz balls on the chest. What yeah. do you call that? Buzz tits. I got the buzz tits. <laughs> <laughs> the look on your face is priceless. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, yeah, then after that, there's not that much. So I just get the rest of it waxed. And I feel like if you're a chick that that is, don't be scared. Just just suck it up. And in the first couple of times be might be scared. painful. I've had it done. Be a little scared. I mean, it might be painful initially, but I feel like it's worth the long game because after you shave for so long, like that just I don't want to deal with that. Yeah, I feel I know that Stacy gets gets waxed. Yeah. Go um, for you. Good for you. It seems That's like the the, it seems like the move. Yeah, it's better. Yeah, yeah. So much better. Not for us. It's not the move. It's not the move <laughs> for, for a us. dude, it's a whole different Can you imagine story. getting your balls waxed? I mean, like, they pull <laughs> no. this a sticky adhesive thing. No. It would just stretch. You know no. what I mean? Like, it would be like, <laughs> smack. The first thing, I don't even know why I thought of this, but when I thought about getting my balls waxed, <laughs> the first thing I thought of, and this doesn't even make 100% sense, was that that's some human centipede type shit. <laughs> like, I feel like, you know, like the doctor mm -hmm. and the human centipede yeah. would probably try to wax your balls. You know, <laughs> do some aggressively German shit. You ever see that movie? That dude is a fucking no, psychopath. No, I haven't actually. It's like my favorite part of the human centipede is that German doctor. He is a goddamn madman. We're going to have to watch it. I now. remember looking at it's an hour and a half of your life. You can't get back. I bet I've heard that it's the first human centipede is icky. not that bad. It's really mental. Mm -hmm. It's not as gross out as the other ones were because okay. I think that they, they really like leaned into it heavily on the sequel. Okay. Um, but the first one, my favorite part is the actor that plays like the German doctor just because he's so fucking intense. Nine. Just, okay. An intense dude. <laughs> Nine. I remember at the time I looked up his IMDb page because I was really curious to know what other movies he had been in just because he was such an intense actor. Okay. Uh, so on his IMDb page at the time, this could be different now. But at the time, this was like 2009 or 10, whenever that came out, he had been in The Human Centipede, a bunch of other German films. So I couldn't pronounce the names. Mm -hmm. And there was only one other English language movie title on his IMDb page. And it uh -oh. was for a movie called Suck My Dick. Oh, shit. Oh, sweet. <laughs> That's awesome. So you know that dude is for real. I was like, dude, this dude <laughs> is fucking frightening. He's balls to the wall. <laughs> yeah, what a fucking psychopath. Oh my god. Oh man. But uh yeah. Well, hey. So that's uh that's a pubic hair question. And my <laughs> my first coherent memory that I have, and we'll kind of wrap up the conversation, I guess, in general with this question and just our Okay. End of the end of the thing, end Got of the it. conversation things. But my first memory that I have is standing at the top of the steps of my like first childhood home mm -hmm. and like looking out the door and like seeing my dad get home from work or something. Mm -hmm. That's the first memory I have. I can see that. That's that's that makes sense. Yeah. I want to say my first childhood memory is like in my first home too. And I know we moved before I was like two or three or three or four or something like that. And I remember like they're all kind of smushed together. Like I remember like my next door neighbor, my best friend at the time, like who, like I did, never knew after I was like three or four. Like, I think I met him once as like a younger kid, but, like running in the backyard. I remember like bits and pieces of like birthday parties and like, you know, the, like what my back door looked like, like looking out. So yeah, those are probably, how about you? You know, there was some shit with my uncle, but that's a whole different <laughs> I'm sorry. I just <laughs> <laughs> Brian's face was like. <laughs> that was, hey, that wasn't even my joke. We just saying, watched well, a million know, ways to die. I in the know, way. I know. <laughs> He's asking the guys like, so you're a virgin? He's like, well, there was some shit with my uncle, but you know, that's a whole. <laughs> no. Uh, shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> sorry if I offended anyone. So sorry. Um, no, uh, I don't know. Oh, man. Same shit as you. Just like a house when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny, though, because I think about stuff like that, like early, early memories. I remember seeing an interview with Brandon Crow and he talks about that, you know, old memories you have and how they kind of like become who you, like a part of who you are, you know, like your earliest memories and just like, I don't know. I think I'm getting really existential and weird. It's the end of the interview. I'm burned out. I'm out of crazy. Yeah, story. no, I think the, the interesting <laughs> thing about that, like thinking about like, why was that my first memory? Like, I don't know. 
if it's just me putting this thought into attaching a, a thought to the memory or attaching a meaning to the memory now mm -hmm. in my mm -hmm. adult years. Mm -hmm. But I feel as if that was like the first time I like really remember like being aware of anything like, oh, like that's a dad. And mm -hmm. like, this is like a house and a living yeah. room. And like, that's a TV. It like, gave you know, you some like, placement like in the world. some sort of like, like weird sort of like, yeah, just being like aware of things around me. Right. It's a big, it's not so much even just like looking at my dad, like coming home, like watching him shut the door and walk up the steps. I also kind of remember like walking away from the door and like walking through like the kitchen. Cause it was like, it was one of the situations where like the first thing you walk into is the kitchen. Then it's like the living room's attached, like walking through the kitchen and into the living room and seeing like our entertainment stand mm -hmm. and like looking at the carpet. I remember like, it's like a very like kind of like blurry, but like minute of mm -hmm. like memory, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like, yeah, all but it like placed there. you in, in like uh -huh. space and time. Yeah, and so yeah, you yeah. had like, like you know, yeah, like touch points. Like kinda. I'm just kind of like looking at everything around me in the house a little differently. Like, what is this? What is that? Yeah, you know, like yeah, kind of, kind of, yeah. Interesting. And now here we are. I know. All these years later, sitting here in a different room, talking to the internet. You're still looking around like, oh, yeah, I'm, a chair. I'm still chair. I'm trying to figure out what the hell I'm doing. That's with a reptilian <laughs> Mona Lisa. On I know, yeah. which is very striking, by the way. It's good when your that. world can still surprise you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. So yeah, we didn't do any, uh, Means fuck, I didn't do any, you got to eat this real quick. I'm going to do those just so uh, we talked about Denny's and Permanis and all these other things. But for those that have more refined tastes real quick, you got to eat this. Bon me and tea in Lawrenceville. It's a really cool uh, bon me shop. If you like bon me sandwiches, it's right there across from New Amsterdam. It's a good place. I think it's family run. Uh, good food in an okay neighborhood. Some people have their thoughts about Lawrenceville. I don't mind it that much, but if you're around, go to bon me and tea. You got to check it out. Uh, you got to see this. I finally finished Game of Thrones. I'm a little behind everybody. There was a lot of people that were complaining. They weren't happy with how it ended. I don't know how any of these was, motherfuckers expected I it to end. I was still hearing people complain at a party last night. I was like, you're still upset I don't, over I don't that. know how they expected mm -hmm. it to end. I thought it made sense. Did the two of you watch Game of Thrones? I thought, well, we were huge Game of Thrones fans. Yeah, uh, we still I are. We're actually have, watching it I, again. The, my main thing, uh, I will just say that the beginning of the series reminded me of like a, the mix between a play and a book done really well. And by the end of the last season, it was pure Hollywood. And so, sure, you know, sure. I, I would have liked, and that was inevitable when they, the production went out and became such a, a popular show. Right. I would have liked to see them stay a little truer to the roots of the show. You know what I mean? And I know they didn't have the source material to go off at that point, but I, I feel like even if you weren't aware of the books, you'd be watching that. Like, you know what? I feel like there was a little bit more integrity in the beginning. And I've seen memes. They show seasons one through four, and there's like this beautifully drawn pencil drawing of a horse. And then like the next seasons, it's like you know a stick figure. <laughs> 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 and I think I think there's a little bit of merit to that, even though I'm not as butthurt as other people. Who yeah, are. I think that I, I just it just made sense to me. Like I was like, I mean, there was some stuff that I was cool with, some stuff I wasn't cool with. But I mean, it's fucking life. Yeah, I want? honestly kind of like that. I was fine with where everything landed. It was kind of like. I do feel like they could have almost taken their time to get there a little, maybe not taking their time, but just like, I feel like there could have been a little bit of a progression to like everyone kind of like, Ooh, sorry. Let's talk with my hands. Everyone landing. She's like Italian. If you wanted to be quiet, just tie her hand behind her. <laughs> <laughs> totally true. That stereotype is 100% true. Like, I don't care. It's all right. No, <laughs> no. I want to see if she can do it. No, it's hard. I don't. I don't know. I've literally like knocked drinks off of tables, like at bars and stuff. Yeah, uh -huh. but yeah, I do feel like I just feel like it was like a little bit more like rushed or something. You know what I mean? Like I would have rather had more episodes only being an hour than less episodes that were like an hour and a half. Yeah, 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 that. yeah. That was a little weird, huh? Yeah, yeah, I agree with yeah, that. Yeah, that that was sort of my main complaint. Is I thought they could they could have developed the storylines a little bit better if they had just taken a little bit more time. Yeah, it did feel like I was, uh, you know, you finished, mm -hmm. you finished it. Okay, so on episode five of season eight, I'm like, there's still a lot that needs to be answered here. And there's yeah. only right. one more episode. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. It just seemed, yeah. and that, that's what I remember feeling a little cheated is because it felt rushed. Yeah. It's really hard though for, the I think any TV show to kind of not rush yeah. it. Like I can't think of any TV show off the bat where I'm like, oh yeah, well, they did that good. And they mm -hmm. just pointed out all these things that were brought up, all this foreshadowing that was all along the show. 
all along the storyline that just never, it's just like in his books, everything that comes up, like there's a reason for it. You know what I mean? Uh, and he really develops his storylines really well. Like there's none of this like, oh yeah, we brought this up. You know, they mentioned uh, this wolf pack. I think they mentioned it in the show, right? Yeah, they mentioned the wolf pack. There was like this huge pack of wolves. I think, you know, because they finally mentioned it in the show, remember? No, I no, swear no. they did. Uh, I'm thinking of the books anyway. There were plenty of things that people brought up. They were like, they introduced all these threads and then they just didn't go anywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. The books aren't like that. Like if he brings up a thread, you know what I mean? He he weaves it into the story and it's a, it's a lot better storytelling than what they did at the end, in my opinion. I think it's hard with a, a TV show and something with a budget like that. And, uh, you know, it's like a too many cooks in the kitchen situation where sure. it's really hard to please everybody on the on the creative staff and then it makes it really hard to please everybody that's a fan of the show. It's just, well, what the fuck are you going to do? Right. But, um, yeah. So, I mean, game of Thrones, I didn't think it was that big of a deal how it ended. Just want to say that real quick. And if you haven't seen it, I mean, you don't got to see it, but it, I didn't I'd mind recommend it. it. It's I, yeah, you should see it. I didn't I mean, mind it. Seriously. I watched all of it. I definitely yeah, dig tell, hating on it. shit that's popular, but this is no. popular for a reason. This is yeah. one of those things. Oh, that's really, that was the one thing. Like really I never, cool. I never watched an episode of it until this year. Yeah. Um, and then and whenever, didn't you totally binge on it? Then? Oh yeah, yeah, I definitely <laughs> binged it. Well, seriously. Oh, I mean, yeah. like yeah, just like starting to really get into it. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, I get it. You know, I mean, yeah. just like by the. Even before the first season was over, I was like, oh, I totally get why Absolutely. everybody loves this show. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's wrap up. The camera battery, you can see it's going to die. Oh, so shit. let's see if we can catch it. The audio is oh, fine. Let's shit. see if we can catch it before we get out of here. We've been going for an hour 40. This is a oh, quite damn. quite a good one. This is quite a good one. Have Thanks fun. for hanging Have in there Have fun editing this. Yeah. So um, <laughs> Twist of Fate. Winner's Descent. Yeah, we didn't really touch upon that. I just want to say that we're working on an EP right now. That's the big thing. Cool. Yeah, and we haven't put out music in quite a while. People who've been following the band know. They're like, dude, where's the new music at? What the hell are you doing? So we are in the process of recording an EP. We're trying to have it out. This. Yeah, like in the <laughs> fall, it's going to be, a, it's happening. It's happening. I'm going to say that again. It's happening. Hell yeah. <laughs> And that is all, folks. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. Julia. Jerry, Twist of Fate, Winner's Descent, long time coming. Want to make a quick shout out again to our friends at Denny's for sponsoring the podcast. <laughs> really, but not really. Wait, we'll uh, be coming be in for our free meal. <laughs> I'll be back again next time with another episode. Same place, same channel. You know the drill. My name is Sykes. Start the beat 2019. Woo, woo. Thanks woo, woo. for listening. And that is all, my friends. We did it. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Woo. Oh, I gotta take these things off. Oh, I, I knew this was gonna be long. <laughs>